Hi, how are you? This is Cecilia. Hi. Welcome to the GCCA Facebook Live. And today we are going to run Fountain for Kids demo. So as you see, I have a special guest with me. Hi. And she's my daughter. And she will felt along. So I believe a lot of kids are already getting excited because school is almost finished. And but there you have more time to create. So how about check out how we create uh, fountain um, to create different things and which my daughter has been done for many years. So we are going to show you some of the works and some really fun thing. If you have the material, you can felt a lot. If you don't, don't worry. Um, you can either take classes with me. Um, we can also have Zoom workshops later on for kids. So there you go. So she's getting all excited. I'm going to bring this down and she's going to show what we have. Uh, so here's some examples of things I've made before. Uh, these are my first two projects. Oh. You see, this is starting to yeah. come up, and yeah. she started doing that yeah. around four years old. And then the next thing we have is this bird. I don't know what bird it is, but uh, I it was my first three D project, and it's this bird. It looks, it still looks pretty good. Um, and then I made this little bundle of farm animals with like a chick and some sheep and a horse which took a long time yeah she did this during a festival so when she was young um i started fouting when she was about a year and this is all because of a special shower baby shower gift we received and that really got me started to make more um, memory pieces so this was a gift from a it's like a jingle ball and then uh, when she was two, I started to make some, a cake, a birthday cake to remind um, her birthday. And we kept this for the past nine years. And since then, she always wanted to copy what I've been doing. So she'd been trying to use a marker, pretending using a felting needle. Obviously there's no sharp needle in it. So she pretend working with the wool and I, I record a lot of video and pictures of that. I will show that on my um, Fantastic Fashion page. But this is the, uh, the piece that she make during the festival. We often doing demonstrations, so she make that. Um, Is watching it? Um, Can you see how many and uh, Sheep and different animals. And later on, she start to make a little bit more, like uh, sushi. Uh, this all started uh, second grade, spring break. And I <laughs> and I made this little uh, picture for of sushi, and then I decided to make an actual three D set of sushi with like tamago, tobiko, tuna, and uh, shrimp. And then I made these teeny little ones. Yeah, this is like uh, recently. So yeah, pretty get recent. up to challenge, right? A lot yeah. of tiny, tiny ones. And then this is my most recent thing. And it's this sunset picture that I took in Greenville. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, she have practiced. So, throughout the year, she's been making different things. So, as you can see, um, there are things that she we kept. It's not like really like perfect, but then it's kind of a piece we kept it as it's a great memory. And she remember all her other uh, things she have created. So we I kept all of those, and it's a great memory seeing when and what we done, and why she keep making. I think she saw me doing this, so I love to work together with her. Um, so I create this kit, as you can see, this uh, project kit that I have created. So my, my kids always trying to kind of follow, imitate, and then she make her own versions out of it. It's cute. It's cute. So like um, with Fountain, there is no right and wrong. It's very uh, forgiving. So um, it's really up to what you like to do. And I find it really fun. So I really enjoy like uh, felting as a bonding activity. So today we have decided a few special um, project We're because gonna... her recent birthday gift, a uh, film, is about a fox. What's an actual? 
So um, her birthday cake, we are friends though, we have a neighbor, uh, Greenfield Artist. She made this uh, eatable one, but we already ate it. <laughs> so we cannot actually keep this. So I decided to make a, a copy of the cake that she got and I use wood to keep it. So that is something we can keep that uh, forever as then remember. And I'm later I'm gonna put down her age and also the year at the back. So you she know that that is the one piece she got it way into in 2020. So we're gonna make a needle felted and wet felted box. So And we have this template uh, for the different pieces of the fox and you just basically have to take the correct color and just make the shape so that it's around the same shape as the face for the face and so on and then you can just yeah so i am going to demo a wet felting project while my daughter will start off with her needle felting and we will go over both so wet felting, if you have seen my last uh, live video, I show you how we work with wool and how wool can match together by adding water and soap, plus a lot of agitation. That's how to tangle the fiber together. So that's how it works. So uh, we are kind of similar uh, to create like the base. So I'm going to pull my roving. This uh, Carida wool, so it's, um, it still work doable with wet felting because the micron is about 30 micron with uh, merino wool which is even better merino wool is about uh, 22 micron so the lower the micron size the wool will felt each other because they are more fine but it's still fine with the uh, curry down and these are the color that I have um, used uh, to create all the projects especially with kids they love bright color and i love bright color just like this wool babe i made it was actually my first project i made it like more than 10 years ago already and i still love wearing it and it's kind of bright and cheerless up so with wet felting we're laying different uh, wool as the pattern as the base so i also shaping it and create the shape of the fox while she's also preparing her parts, then she's going to needle felt it. But with wet felting, we cannot do it one part at a time. We actually need to prepare all the parts. So I'm trying to create the shapes. Then um, the pattern will show much better. So here are the triangle. And you may find out with wet felting, it is more abstract. It is not like um, needle felting that is de as detailed. Again, in like these examples, you see the all different stripes. They are done with wet felting. It's kind of like watercolor at the end. But with needle felting, it is more precise. Then you can create lines and shapes, and that's how we can create the uh, painting out of it. And with a uh, wet felting, we bring you we create a two-dimensional project because we need to wet felt, but we can still create a uh, three-dimensional a more make the um it's not like just flat, but mostly is 2D. So I'm gonna start off with this 2D wet felting. So what we need, we need to add some so and then i'm going to add hot water so hot water have to hold the project the water will hold the project down and then the hot water will have to open up the scales from the natural fiber so does the hot water as well the soap so i'm going to press down and making sure all the pieces are nicely stick together. So this is a perfect project for younger age um, because they don't need to work with any sharp object. The needle are very sharp. So when I let my 
young kids to work with needle, I will go through all the details of and also the safety portions and you all will listen well and then they followed and then they're able to create a project but with web belting um, it is more like an it's very simple uh, just adding water with a lot of rubbing a lot of young kids they love this web belting so we're going to add a lot of rubbing sometimes I will put my project inside the ziplock bag then you won't make a big mess, get wet everywhere. But I will also work on a tray. So this is how I do, keep rubbing and rubbing, and then the parts should be all stick together as one piece of wet feather. It's really abstract like this. So now my daughter will going to work on the needle belting. So for her, we're going to start off with the base of the face, just like how I start off with my web belting. And she start off with a single needle that most of the people who have been using uh, can use this uh, single needle to poke. But we normally use the this two needle inside. It can help to tuck in the items. So she is trying to use the two needle to shape the triangle. So let's take a quick look. So because of the sharp needle, this is a tool. I always let my younger kids to hold on so they're not going to um, mistakenly slap themselves, <laughs> but if they're really, really paying attention, they will work well. And all they do is poke and then attaching the wool together. So my daughter loved to kind of um, making a lot of badges, keychain, right. and sometimes with pictures like things from. Um, the Pikachu that she loved to make some Pikachu needle felting like this one or like something like the Harry Potter design so she loved to just to create whatever she had in mind and a lot of time I encourage uh, my student to draw and then create so now she had the uh, triangular shape ready so it's good to start off with this special punch. So this punch has five needle, and if it's a flat bottom, so it will have to flatten out all the um, wool really fast. So this is also the same time where I allowed my much younger kids. So I have a Sienna's K, uh, K4, four years old. Sometimes I do have like a Sienna's three years old. So, but I will let them to use this tool because they only grip on the top part while they always have their hand on the outside. So this is more safe and not to worry about they will step themselves. So we stay focused and only working on the middle. And then next, should we move on to add the years? Okay, you can use this. <laughs> and as you can see, my daughter has been very comfortable using just the uh, needle and she knows how it works. But for younger kids, I have a special tool. So like you can see, have this special tool, they have to use this coffee stir to hold the project. So then they would not going to step themselves and really safe way. So this is how I can run classes at school where I have 20 to 30 kids in the same room and they all doing their needle felting. Um, but it works fine. They all enjoying it. All can accomplish to what they can create. So after they have the year, we're gonna add a little bit white in the middle. And at the same time, I am continue to rub a little bit more because this is not quite ready. We have to keep rubbing for. 
quite some time. So if you don't have this plastic gloves at home, I can actually wrap can up some of the hand, plastic yeah. plastic bag. Why I'm not using just my hand? Because if your hand get wet, the wool will kind of stick onto your hand and that is probably not as a good idea. So um, it's good we use the plastic because Plastic is actually a man-made material that it will not stick onto the wool fiber. But wool itself, it has uh, scales within it and that's why how it can attach with each other after I put in hot water and soap. So wearing a plastic glove is or using a plastic bag, it will have to rub and want to make all the fiber stick together even more. As we rub more, the fiber will turn more stands and solid together. Basically, needle felting is the same idea. The needle at the end, the tip, the bottom part, is has some notches. It actually kind of catches some of the fiber every time they poke. So that's why they attach and you can see the work is starting to shrink uh, more. But the difference of wet felting again, wet felting and needle felting, wet felting is more um, abstract. It's harder to create the exact shape, especially a project is very small. But for needle felting, you could do a little bit more precise. So it looks like she's ready for the next part after she put on the year. So this is how it's been up to right now. So she has created the face and also the ears and she's now going to work on the one side of the face before she add the eyes. So you enjoy so far? Yeah. <laughs> so we always create different things and sometimes when she have a certain idea pop up in your head and then you just make it out of wool. Yeah. Or cardboard. Oh, cardboard. <laughs> so this is a good time like we can chit chat. Um, so it's a great bonding activity. We always love to uh, felt together and making different things, especially I can keep all her um, creations and I will remember what she did and it is great like for me as a mom so I'm going to dry off with a towel this wet felt pieces is actually a piece of fabric once we finish and the fabric is felt we can create different things so from now i need to use a bamboo mat to just to roll it to create extra agitation so then it will become more one piece together so this summer Originally, I have a five-day summer camp at GCCA for um, both age group from five to eight and nine to twelve. But since the um, the summer camp will not reopen until later in Ju July, so my five-day camp will turn into a one-day Zoom session on the two on Tuesday. June 16 and will be an hour and a half so I will let my student who uh, log online and it's great that the parents will, will like to join along and they will kind to create some basic shapes out of wet felting and depends on the age group I will also give them the chance to work with needle felting and we want to make sure that everybody get a chance to create. So this is my wet felt piece while I'm waiting for my daughter to finish her. Now she's adding the eye. And she's almost there. Let me take a look quickly. 
she's gonna add her eye so we are creating a lot of geometrical shapes And this tool is really helpful, especially for the younger kids. They can help to line and create the shape precisely. And they can learn all different shapes at the same time and color. And while they do uh, painting, they will learn about mixing and blending the color. So this Sunday, if you still um, interested to start off with workshop, taking workshop at GCCA in person. Um, this is the Spring Nature workshop this coming Sunday. And you can create different patterns like flowers or landscape. Um, so this is for this Sunday. Oh, yes. This is the safeguard I get. So all my students, I will provide this clear shield so that everybody will be able to be more comfortably wearing this while doing the project and can easily to see through. So I, I feel this is much easier to, um, to create my work with this face shield. So I will provide it for my student. So this is the, again, this Sunday, if we get enough students to sign up, this will be the class. I'm looking forward to come back. Or if you want to wait a little bit later until June, there will be the uh, wet belting workshops, June 14, I believe. It's a washcloth and also felt soap. So I love making the felt soap again for young kids because it's, you can make it in a small size. If we, If you are more, in advance, you can also add some details on the soap. So they are actually encourage kids to wash the hand. And at the same time, the wool can have to exfoliate as well. It was kind of stay on, on your hand. It's not going to slip off as easy. And lastly, it will dry it off really, really fast. You don't worry about the soap. Uh, we'll just stay soak on the on the, next to the sink. Oh, looks like my daughter is finished. So it's just perfect. So in June, there's a, there is a one day um, camp. And then this is the, um, this kind of like a simple project belting for kids. <laughs> so you can, the kids can create like different shapes. And there's a lot more like the little penguin. Or the little bear. Like an owl, ladybug. <laughs> so a lot of different things that they would like to do. So um, that's for the kids, and I also have one more for adults. This is the um, later in June. It's the uh, Nuno seal scarf, and also the landscape. In end of July, for um, most of age group to create the four parts wall painting. So I'm happy to share what I enjoy, what I love. I hope you also enjoy. And here, my daughter, she's really good at cleaning our tools. So yes, we do need to clean our tools when we finish, just like after we paint. You, because when we need a felt, we have the wool pushing downward. We're kind of pushing some of the loose fiber in it. So we need to clean it off so then the wool will not stay under that. Uh, if we keep on poking, which means we're kind of felting some of the loose wool inside. So it is good we have to clean them every time we finish and also it won't transfer color. So if you have any different questions, you're welcome to um, ask me. I am more than happy to share and I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy our simple demonstration belting uh, for kids. And this is a puppet. Let's say bye. Bye.
click finish.